Let's stick with the story because it is the big one for the day, folks. Let's turn now to Shannon Kani. He is an assistant professor in cybersecurity at the University of Melbourne, and today he's joining us from Bristol, England. Ka Shannon, thank you so much for making time for us. Morning. Thank you so much for having me on. Okay, so my friend and colleague Linda sort of broke down what the heck went wrong, but I need you to explain it to me like I'm five years old. How did we get here? So if you're a big company and you have a lot of computers in your business to monitor, you want to make sure that there are no viruses on them, that no one's hacked them. And so you'll probably contract with a third party company, in this case, CrowdStrike, to monitor those computers. So they'll install or give you some software to install that will watch to make sure nothing nefarious is happening. Unfortunately, CrowdStrike sent out an update that was meant to help these computers identify what might go wrong in the future. And instead, this update was the source of things going wrong. And so the computers, when they read this file, it started going into an infinite loop of rebooting. So you get what's called the blue screen of death, this famous blue screen that shows up on Windows computers when the computer crashes. So does the culpability or responsibility lie with CrowdStrike or with Microsoft? Because uh, Apple iOS uh, systems are not down, Lexus is not down, so where where is the fault? So this piece of software, in order to monitor the entire computer, needs to be very, very close to the core of the machine, to the core of the software that runs the thing. This means that Microsoft does not really want to be giving this software control, and so the software has actually taken over control from what Microsoft originally would have put there. As a result, this means that while Microsoft is responsible for the operating system, they're probably not responsible for the crash. This is another company coming in, taking things over, and so when something goes wrong, it's their software that's more likely to blame. So how long do you think it'll take before things get back up and running at 100%? So this is a bit of a real question. Uh, for some systems that manage to get out of this infinite loop of turning on and rebooting, if they can get online and get the update that the company CrowdStrike has released, then they'll be able, those, the companies that have those computers will be able to restore service fairly quickly. However, the main workaround that CrowdStrike has provided to businesses is to go to each individual computer that's having this problem and type in a series of commands. If you're in a business and you have tens of thousands of computers like this, you're going to need a lot of technicians to go to those computers and type in those commands. And that could take hours, if not days, depending on what you have available. That clearly indicates to me a major flaw in the workflow, don't you think, Shannon? Like, I'm, if I look back at our newsroom, there's at least 200 computers in my line of vision. So to have an individual, our IT department, who are running ragged this morning, going from computer to computer, turning it on, if the problem can be sent out so quickly with just the press of a button, why can't the solution? The problem is you need an internet connection in order to receive the update. But it seems, at least for some of the computers, that they can't turn on even to the point where they can connect to the internet to get that update. Now, this obviously causes chaos because most businesses do not have enough technicians to simultaneously service all the computers. They anticipate that a handful of them will go offline at any one time, but this is causing a sort of disruption that is entire business-wide. So we know that hospitals and public services are being affected. We know that airlines are canceling flights. The productivity is way, way down because people can't get online. Who is going to be held responsible for this? Is anyone going to be held um, accountable for this major, major mishap? So there's a bit of subtlety here. So there are both the devices, the computers that individual workers use, your laptop, your desktop computer that you sit down at. Then there are also the computers that run the organizations behind the scenes. And there, some of them are impacted directly by this problem. And other, others of them are impacted because Microsoft themselves had some of their computers go down, which meant the infrastructure that everyone relies on also went down. Now, depending on the organization, if you have a contract with Microsoft that requires them to provide a certain amount of service, well, perhaps Microsoft will be responsible for paying out. For businesses that had uh, CrowdStrike software installed on their computers, they might have had a contract with CrowdStrike.
that means that they will have an avenue for reimbursement or recompense there. But that's only a small part of the equation. That's at the small business level where you're asking, who's going to pay my individual business? But we're talking about a much larger international reckoning. This is obviously a problem that spans borders, and that goes all the way up to the top levels of the government. So we're seeing in many different countries, governments are starting to point the finger at crowd at CrowdStrike and ask them to come up with a kind a better answer than the one they've given thus far. OK, Shannon Kani, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much for having me.